to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 27. We welcome you today to our study of the truth about homosexuality. Friend, today we're considering what does God in his divine word say about homosexuality? And while we recognize this is a controversial subject in some ways in our world today, we're going to be letting God and His Word give us guidance on this subject today. And so we're glad that you've joined us for our Bible study. We hope that if you haven't got your Bible handy, that you'll get your Bible because today we're just going to open up the Word of God, read from God's Word, and see what He has to say on this subject. And so we want to encourage you to have your Bible ready as we're going to look to the Word of God today on this subject. As always, today's lessons are being brought to you. Today's lesson is brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. You'll find people there, whether you stop by on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday evening, you will find people in the Lord's Church who are kind and friendly, who love God and other people, and who are concerned about men and women going to heaven. And so if you'd like to study more about today's subject or any subject, they'd be happy to sit down and discuss the Word of God with you at any time. And friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we want to help you in your journey to know God and His will better. Won't you check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all of our video lessons online. We have a, a, a wide variety of Bible lessons, every book of the Old Testament, every book of the New Testament, and a wide variety of topics. And we just encourage you to visit our website. Check those out. If you'd like to have those uh, lessons for yourself, you can download them free, or we can send them to you in a DVD or CD as well. We're thinking today about a subject which we recognize is very controversial in our world today. And so as we prepare to think about this subject, we want you to understand a few things uh, related to that. First and foremost, we want to let God and His voice be heard. My opinion and your opinion is not what matters. We're going to be judged by the words of God. John chapter 12, verse 48, Revelation chapter 12, uh, 20 verses 12 through 15. And so what God says on the subject, regardless of anybody else's opinion, that's what matters. And secondly, my friend, we want you to know that today's lesson is coming out of love. We do not promote violence. We do not promote being unkind or mean-spirited toward any of these people, someone who's involved in whatever the sin may be. We do not promote violence or anything like that toward them at all. In fact, God loves them. God loves all men. God loves them. We love them. We want them to be saved. And thus, in presenting this message, it's in a spirit of love for those who are involved in this type of sin. But friend, please also understand that sin, sin, whether it be a, a liar, whether it be a fornicator, whether it be an adulterer, whether it be somebody involved in other immoral practice, homosexuality, whatever it may be, sin is sin, and sin separates man from God, and one sin is not any worse in its eternal consequences than any other sin that's there. And so today, let's open our Bible, let's turn to the Word of God, and let's see what God has to say about the subject of homosexuality. Let's begin at the very beginning. I want to ask you to open your Bible with me to Genesis chapter 2, verse number 24. What is God's plan for marriage, for the family, and for the home? 
Look in your Bible in Genesis chapter 2, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says in verse number 24. Moses said in the long ago, or God said in the long ago, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Here's God's original plan for the family. A man leaving his father and mother, being joined to his wife, and the two, man and woman, becoming one flesh. And so when we look at God's original paradigm for the family, one man, one woman, joining together in marriage, and through that relationship, they become a family, they become a household, and children can be brought into that family. When God created man, God made Adam and God made Eve. They came together as a family unit. And so God's original plan, man and woman, marrying together, becoming a family. Listen carefully. God did not make man and man. Adam did not leave father and father. Adam did not leave father and or mother and mother. Adam left father and mother. Man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Two men. God did not create two men or two women to join together into a marriage. That is contrary to what the Bible teaches for marriage and the home and the family. That is not God's original design for that. Now, I understand as well as uh, you may today that our society and the media especially is pushing the homosexual agenda, uh, the LGBTQ plus or whatever you may want to add to that. That's being pushed so much on our, our society on every person who turns on the television, on our children. Children are being so confused on so many different levels. But friend, when you go back to the Bible, it is such a simple plan. One man, one woman coming together in the marriage relationship. And from that, the home and the family comes forth. And so when we think about homosexuality, friend, it's just not. It's not according to God's pattern that we find even in the beginning of the, new, uh, of the Bible itself. All right, let's look at a second passage. I want to invite you to open your Bible to Genesis chapter 19. A second time we find the idea of homosexuality mentioned in the Bible. We turn to Genesis chapter 19, and here we see the depravity of Sodom and Gomorrah. Look in Genesis 19, verses 4 and 5. These two angels have come to Lot in the area of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible says, Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house, and they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you? Bring them out to us, that we may know them carnally. So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him, and said, Please, my, listen to this, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. When we think about problems related to um, homosexuality, sodomy, things like under that. We see that in the early days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so here you've got these two men. They come into town. The people of that town are so wicked and immoral that they basically think new people, let's have sex with them, and they want them to bring those men out and know them carnally. And listen to what Lot says. Please do not act so wickedly. From the standpoint of God and righteousness, those actions were wicked in the sight of Almighty God. And so, again, you've got them forcing themselves, and we are trying to force themselves, and we understand that, but the practice itself was something that was contrary to the will of God. Well, back in the Old Testament, how did God feel about homosexuality? And friend, let me preface this by saying this. I understand we're not living, we live today under the New Testament. God's law is found under the New Testament of Jesus Christ. What we're showing by looking at these Old Testament passages is that God 
throughout the Bible has been consistent in speaking out against homosexuality. Do we believe that homosexuals should be stoned? Do we believe they should be put to death? Do we believe that there should be violence toward them today? Absolutely not. But we want you to see God's consistent on this being contrary to His will. Look in your Bible in Leviticus chapter 18, verse number 22. We're going to look at two passages here. Leviticus chapter 18, listen to the clarity of God's voice on homosexuality under the Old Testament. Here's what the scripture says. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. That word abomination is about as strong a language as you could, uh, you could bring up to describe how God absolutely detests and abhors that type of action. And so under the Old Testament, God said, you shall not lie with the male as with the woman. It's an abomination. Homosexuality was contrary to the will of God under the Old Testament. And again, we're not living under the Old Testament, but under the Old Testament, the penalty of that was very severe. Look in Leviticus chapter 20, and I want you to see what the penalty for such an action was. Look in Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 13. How serious was God about that? If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And so this was serious under the old law, under the covenant of Moses. If two people were caught doing this, they would be stoned to death. It was a very very serious crime. And again, there were other things that they would be stoned to death for under the law of Moses as well, but this just shows the consistency and the seriousness of God against the homosexual action under the Old Testament. All right, look at another passage. I want you to turn to the book of Judges, Judges chapter 19. And I want you to see another example of this. As God speaks in the Old Testament about homosexuality, look in Judges chapter 19. And here you've got this, this disturbing scene about the Levite's concubine mentioned in the area of Gibeah. Judges chapter 19. Listen to verse 22 and 23. As they were enjoying themselves, that's this man and his concubine, as they were enjoying themselves, this man is visiting with another man. Suddenly, Certain men of the city, listen to this now, perverted men surrounded the house, beat on the door. They spoke to the master of the house, the old man saying, bring out the man who came to us. And it goes on to say, uh, bring out the man who came to us so that we may know him carnally. But the man, the master of the house, went out to them and said to them, No, my brethren, I beg you, do not act so wickedly, seeing as this man has come into my house. Do not commit this outrage. And so when you think about what's going on here, friend, we find again, Another example of people wanting to have relations with these men. The men of the city wanted to have relations with those who came. And again, you hear these words, do not act so wickedly. In the Bible, these activities were described as wickedness, ungodliness, immorality, things that are not right. These persons are identified as perverted persons. Why? It's very simply because it is a perversion of God's plan going back to Genesis 2:24, one man, one woman coming together inside that relations between a man and a woman are just and right and holy. Hebrews 13:4, but this type of action is a perversion of God's original plan for marriage and the home. Look in your Bible if you would in 1 Kings chapter 15, and I want you to see another example. I'd like for you to look with me in verse number 12. We then find a mention of this idea in 1 Kings chapter 15 as we think about the reign of Asa and how he was getting rid of some of the ungodly things that were going on in the land. Listen to 1 Kings chapter 15 verse number 12. And Asa 
banished the perverted persons from the land and removed all the idols that his father had made. Well, these perverted person, the Hebrew word there, as it relates to these perverted persons, literally means those practicing sodomy and prostitution in religious acts. Sodomy, which is another word oftentimes for homosexuality, those people involved in that, especially in the religious sense and involved in that in the prostitution sense, how did God view that? Again, they were viewed as perverted persons. It is a perversion of what's good, homosexuality and things involved in that is a perversion of what's good and right and holy. Are we saying again that this sin is worse than any other sin? Fornication, adultery, uh, whatever it may be, that's also a perversion. Those people are living perverted lives as well because it's a perversion of what's good and right. But friend, please mis don't misunderstand. Homosexuality is not something under the Old Testament that God deems as right and holy and good. Well, let's then turn our attention to the law for God's people today, the New Testament. What did Jesus say about marriage in the New Testament? Look in your Bible in Matthew chapter 19, and I want you to see that what we heard at the beginning of our lesson from the mouth of God, Jesus also instituted and brought back in to the New Testament in Matthew chapter 19. Listen to Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 19. Notice verse number 4. And Jesus answered and said to them, watch this now, Have you not read? He who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. You know, sometimes we talk to people about the idea of homosexuality and they say, Well, Jesus never said it was wrong. Wait a minute now. When Jesus affirmed God's original plan for marriage, For this reason man shall leave his father and mother, God made a male and female, there's how Jesus felt about it. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. When Jesus said, male and female, and when Jesus taught marriage was between a man and a woman, Jesus affirmed God's original plan. And anything against that is, again, a perversion of what is right and good and holy. And so Jesus' stamp of approval is on marriage between one man and one woman, and anything contrary to that is not according to God's law. Let's now consider the two clearest passages in the New Testament about the action of homosexuality. I want to invite you to open your Bible to the book of Romans with me. This is such a clear passage on the subject. I want you to see Romans chapter 1 with me. Would you look in your Bible in Romans chapter 1? And I want you to hear what God says in beginning in verse number 26. Romans 1 verses 26 and 27. Here's what Paul says. For this reason... By inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, For this reason God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which is due. Friend, I want to ask you to think about for just a moment some of the words that are used here. Listen to these adjectives. It, it, this is described as vile, dirty or filthy. This is described as shameful, something people ought to be ashamed of. Homosexuality is described as unnatural, and it is an error deserving of a penalty. And of course, that's a spiritual penalty, wherein if people live in that, they will suffer the consequences. But did you hear that? Vile or filthy, shameful, unnatural, it is an error or it's wrong. Friend, can you find a clearer language to show that this is not according to God's will? Men with men committing what is shameful and unnatural. 
Homosexuality is not something God authorizes in the Bible. Some may say, well, I don't believe in God and I don't care about that. Well, friend, if you don't believe in God in the Bible, then it may be hard to reach people like that. But for Christians, for those who claim to be Christians, a nation that was claimed to be built on uh, in, one, un, in one God we uh, trust, one nation under God, and, and where people believed at one time the Bible was His Word, let's stand behind what God says on this subject. The second passage, which is also vividly clear, is 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I want you to open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I want you to see what the Scripture says in verses 9 through 11. Again, another very clear passage showing that homosexuality is not something that God wants people to participate in. 1 Corinthians 6, I want you to look with me in verses 9 through 11. Paul says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Uh, again, the clarity of this is just hard to miss. These people were involved in a host of things that were grossly immoral. Adultery, fornication, idolatry, lewdness, lustfulness, um, and a host of other things. And among those, homosexuality and sodomy. Friend, all these sins are wrong. None of them in the sense of the eternal consequence is any worse than the other. But please don't miss the fact that Paul said, those who continued in this will not inherit the kingdom of God. If a person continues in fornication, continues in adultery, continues in lewdness, continues in ungodly immorality and adultery, if a person continues in homosexuality and sodomy, any of those sins, that person can't go to heaven. Why? Because you can't live in sin that is against God's will and think that everything's going to be right. My friend, I also want you to notice something else here. Listen to this statement. Such were some of you. People who are involved in sin, whatever it may be, including homosexuality, can give that up. You can. Leave that lifestyle behind. You can amend your life. You can get right with God. You can stop doing those things. And you can go to heaven. Such were some of you. They changed their life. They turned from that. They became obedient to the will of God. And ultimately, they had a home in heaven promised with God. And so, yes, it's definitely something that will cost people their soul. But it's also something you can turn from in your life and turn to God. Let's now consider another passage. Look in your Bible in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. 1 Timothy chapter 1. I want you to hear what Paul says to the young evangelist Timothy as he speaks as well on certain things that were contrary to the will of God in 1 Timothy 1, verses 9 and 10. Paul says, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers, fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is anything else that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Ungodly sinners, profane, vile, all these things, murderers, kidnappers, and sodomites. Again, we're focusing on the idea of what does the Bible say about homosexuality. God says sodomy is contrary to the will of God. Well, let's in the time remaining address a couple of arguments related to that. Often when we speak about the subject of homosexuality, somebody will invariably say, but they're born that way. Well, friend, is that really true? 
Genesis 1 verse 26 says they're made in the image of God. And if God says it's wrong, did God create somebody in a state He says is wrong and sinful? In fact, the evidence actually is against the idea that they're born that way. In fact, when you look at those who map the human genome, Simon LeVay, who's quoted in uh, Shirley Cox and Dean Bird and Jeffrey Robinson in the innate immobility of the argument of homosexuality, he says this about whether they're born that way. He says it's important to stress, and this is the fellow who helped map the human genome, it's important to stress what I didn't find. I did not prove homosexuality is genetic or for not find a genetic cause for being gay. I didn't show that gay men are born that way. The most common mistake people make in interpreting my work. I did, nor did I locate a gay center in the brain. Friend, the idea that people are born that way is not supported by the evidence and God is not going to create someone in a state that is contrary to His will. Well, then we often hear about, but, but God wants me to be happy. What about my happiness? What about your holiness? What about your holiness? Some people, all they want to think about is happiness. God wants you to be holy as well. Without holiness, no one can see God. Hebrews 12, 14, I cannot fulfill every lust, every desire, every impulse I might have. Why? Because God wants me to be holy more than necessarily He wants me to be happy. Can I be happy and be holy? Absolutely. But my happiness does not override the fact that God wants me to live a good, holy life. And so, friend, hear us well again. Is homosexuality something God approves of? You read the Bible and it is abundantly clear. This is sinful action. Do we promote violence toward those people? Do we think this sin and its eternal consequence is any worse than any other? Absolutely not. Do we want them to be saved? You bet. Does God want them to be saved? Absolutely. But friend, you can't continue in any sinful lifestyle and do that. We're glad you joined us today for our study on the truth about homosexuality. And please join us next time as we study more on God's truth. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the